Today is November 9th. The Yankees offseason begins. We got qualifying offers, hitting coaches leaving, and Jake's bold prediction. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Recaps galore. Weekly awards. Stat lines, Steven Hot Takes. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, brought to you by SeatGeek. Code Yanks gets you a discount. My name's Jimmy. Jake is here. BBD is also here. And we're going to talk Yankees offseason. Jake, how are you doing? James, Davis, Wimbledon, everyone. Uh, <laughs> the offseason's getting real, right? Uh, free agency, I think, fully kicks off Thursday. We got a little Rizzo update. Uh, Tyone's in a in an interesting conversation space, and as we, uh, especially for our talking baseball, zoomed out and looked at the free agent pool a little more, you start to realize what the picture actually looks like and what positions are thin and deep. And for the Yankees, I, I don't know. I mean, let's be honest, it stops and starts with Judge still, but um, I don't know. Everyone's kind of putting together what, what they think their offseason plan is, and I think I think you and I are getting closer and closer to that. I have it mapped out already, so I got my lineup set, and every day uh, that we record, I'll just tell you my lineup. Okay. And it's not set yet, though. End of the episode. I just made a change mentally in my head. Did you just sign Masataka Yoshida? I did. You I did. did? I don't like it, though. Okay. I don't like it at all. You're, you're nervous about it. I don't think he's going to hit. Okay. But he's on the team playing left field. Okay. If, if you have no idea what we're talking about, there's a uh, a Japanese player that maybe posted that there's rumors <clears throat> around the Yankees, because there always is. Always is. But let's see. Sign him, let him be good. You want to talk Rizzo? You want to talk qualifying offers, Tyone, your bold prediction? Uh, I guess Rizzo, because maybe that's the easiest conversation. I think. Yeah. So the the qualifying offer this year is nineteen point six five million dollars. If you have no idea what the qualifying offer is, I'll explain it as succinctly as possible. With three words. Here you go. Goodbye, no stay. Four words. No goodbye. Goodbye is one word? Yeah. Oh, I thought you had it as two there. No, I did not. Not goodbye. I thought you were saying like, like a good purchase. A great purchase? No. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Qualif what if you got unlimited words? Okay. A qualifying offer is when you have someone who is uh, leaving your team via free agency. If you give him the qualifying offer, which is like the top free agents. I believe it's the average salary of the top 125 salary. Yes, the top average salary of top 125 salaries, which this year is $19.65 million. So the Yankees offer Rizzo that, and it's nice because it's supposed to keep guys on their local team and keep talent close. It doesn't really do that. It actually like is a deterrent more so. If Rizzo declines that qualifying offer, a draft pick is now attached to him and wh whichever team size, signs him as a free agent has to send a draft pick to the Yankees. That's how they got Aaron Judge way back, the uh, Nick yeah. Swisher qualifying offer. <clears throat> so it used to be a first round pick. Now they changed the rules with the new CBA. But yeah, but it's like a still a top two, I think, or something like that. I think it depends on what you sign them for and all that. It's and, if, it's like your, and if you're thinking that doesn't matter that much, for some teams and some players, it really, really does. Some right. some players have not been signed. Dallas Keuchel didn't get signed until the draft was over because they did not want to lose the draft pick uh, in signing him. Lance Lynn and a couple other guys got dodged by it a couple, uh, and couple we talk, years back. We talk about it around the deadline a lot because the guys that don't get traded, Wilson Contreras from the Cubs, um, a lot of those teams, if they don't get the prospect value return they think they could get from a potential draft pick, then they won't trade that guy as a rental. So that's yep. uh, kind of 
Ties the picture together. So Rizzo had one year, $16 million option that he could have opted into and stayed with the Yankees and got $16 million. He said, no, I think I can get more. He instantly got more because they gave him the qualifying offer, which is one year, $19.6 million. Some people think that Rizzo is a free agent who would be affected by having a draft draft pick attached to him. It would give him maybe less years, less AAV, because the team that signs him is also going to have to give up a pick. Right. And I was reading that they think it's actually a good negotiation ship for the Yankees if they want to say, you know, here's the qualifying offer, but we'll negotiate on it and turn it into a two-year deal right. for uh, 30, which is 15 per, or, you know, 28, 14 per, which is less AAV, but it's another year, total more total money. I don't know. You think that's the case here? I like that, and that made sense. Um, because <clears throat> Rizzo, uh, he turned 33 this year, so you're talking about years 34 and 35. Um, you know, he, defensively at first base, he's still going to be able to be a, a really good version of Anthony Rizzo. Uh, you're hoping with the shift going away, he's going to be able to beat a couple more hits. But we are, you know, now a team signing Anthony Rizzo to probably a two-year deal. I mean, Maybe teams will start going three. I We talked about the first base pool on Talking Baseball a little bit, and I think as full-blown solutions, like no questions asked, um, I really think Rizzo is the best answer. So w- when you think about it that way, if the San Diego Padres are getting back in the mix and you know Rizzo actually had a, a brief stint there, people forget that. I don't know. I, I don't know how much a uh, second or third round pick is going to deter them. I do know it's going to deter them a little more than the Yankees who have a hole at first base and there's not a lot of solutions and we know Rizzo really likes playing in New York, which, hey, uh, I'll go I'll go WFA and Jake for a second. All that crapola when the season end about being tough to play in New York and uh, you know guys talking about not wanting to be there, that ain't there with Rizzo. Uh, he wants to be here. The short porch makes sense. We need lefties. We need a good defensive first baseman. It all makes sense. I do think there is a judge part of this that uh, is interesting because those two seem to be thick as thieves. Ooh. Um, but I don't. I don't know. Out, outside of that, there's no reason that Anthony Rizzo shouldn't be coming back to the Yankees. And I think with the qualifying offer, with the pick attached, it seems like the consensus is it's going to be either two or maybe two with an option. Um, and probably around that 15, 16 million AAV. I'd like to think so. I, I don't know if the Yankees... To just play kind of devil's advocate, I guess, a little bit. Sure. If Judge is the priority, I mean, do the Yankees think they can sign Carpenter to a one-year, one $10 million thing and have him d- split time with DJ? Do they think they can go get Brandon Belt as a backup option or Jose Abreu, that's actually probably more money. Or, like, do they think with DJ and Glaber staying around, there's a less than option that's less money than Rizzo that allows them to wait to see how the judge deal moves? If if another team is hot on Rizzo before judge is even close, does that affect him? I, I guess that's the wild card factor with Rizzo is... He's he's won the war as a baseball player. He's got a World Series. He's made a lot of money. Um, they could solve this in the next 24 hours, and I wouldn't be shocked. Like, they could come out and say two for 30, problem solved. Or, I mean, Rizzo can wait as long as he wants. Like, uh, Tony Riz isn't going to be, you know, if it becomes January, he's not going to be scratching his neck like, I got to figure this out. Like, he's, he's good, uh, and he knows he's going to have options. So, I... Uh, And just for the Yankees, Jose Abreu is older, not as good defensively. He still rakes uh, all the credit in the world to him. Uh, But the Yankees need defensive help at first base. They need lefties. Josh Bell is a switch hitter, but defensively he's Mm -hmm. graded out pretty poorly for a while. Uh, And then you're getting into Trey Mancini, Yuli Gurriel's, that if we're we're taking shots on a Brandon Belt, because we missed out on everyone. What about Carpenter? I just, Matt Carpenter hasn't, like, played a season at first base. No, but um, Cashman mentioned him as a first baseman, which was weird. Yeah, so I, I don't know if Cashman was just kind of putting his pelt on the wall with that comment. You like that phrase? I don't know if you said it right. Like, that's like when you kill someone. 
Yeah, like an animal. Who's he murdered? Well, he's showing off. Like, remember, remember, I, I, I got Matt Carpenter. I, I think I used that right. Maybe you did. Um, I don't know. It, it's all lining up for Rizzo. It would be a surprise, and if it's not, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a 34 year old branded belt, or you know, you start getting into the trade world. That I think the Yankees plan. And it's going to be interesting to see, you know, where the judge numbers actually land and where San Francisco, the Mets, whoever else gets involved, go. I think the Yankees' first two things are really sign judge, sign Rizzo, and then, like, figure out the left side of the infield, which is funny because that was kind of the plan last year, too. <laughs> well, they might think the left side of the infield's fine. Yeah. Like, I mean, they have a plot. Whatever, we won't get into it. Yeah. I'm looking at how many hits Rizzo would have had last year if not for the shift. Okay. I can't make, I can't, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven that I can see in like that shallow, shallow, shallow right field. Yeah, look, I'll show that. I'll show you on the computer screen these dots. Okay. I like those dots. Yeah. Those feel like hitting dots. Over nine, over ninety miles per hour exit velo, so like they're not just slow rollers right. there. Yeah, yeah, and hey, where Rizzo's numbers landed this year: one hundred thirty games, two twenty four, three thirty eight, eight seventeen. You factor in a couple shift shift hits. I mean, you're looking at a two forty, three fifty on base kind of guy, which R- Rizzo feels like that kind of hitter. So, uh, and man, only one that had a two strike approach. Not to be baseball guy. Don't. I won't be baseball guy. Not on this show. People wouldn't want that. Hey, if I'm Anthony Rizzo and I'm a lefty that played games in Wrigley for most of my career where it's hard to hit home runs in April and now I have the short porch, (laughs) like uh, that might scratch my back a little bit. Like, are we talking about a guy that a couple good years can can start making a little bit more of like a Hall of Fame push? I don't know. I don't know either. If he can have a couple more 30 homer seasons, he gets a lot closer, and his best chance to do that is with the Yankees. So everything points to New York. We we know he kind of wanted to come New York uh, when the Yankees traded for Rizzo. Well, we heard that there were some, some good handshakes that got that done. Rizzo re-signed with New York already. <laughs> he wants, he loves Judge. He loves the city. Like, he we wants get to, to make 33. this work. Excuse me? We got to get to 33. Right. 33 home runs. He's had one, two, three, four seasons with 32 home runs. Has never hit the elusive bird shot. That's a cross-sport reference. Wow. You wouldn't get it. I was thought you meant Greg Bird. Playoffs. 33. All right. I didn't mean that. Okay. I meant Larry. The great Larry Bird jersey, 33. I like girls who wear Abercrombie and Fitch. We'll bleep all that out. Yankees uh, and Rizzo seem kind of perfect for each other. Mm, I put it Fills at I put needs. it at sixty forty. Forty? Sixty forty. Forty is in no? Yeah, sixty is in return, forty is in no. I mean the off season would have to go awfully haywire. If Judge is not coming back, I don't think Rizzo's coming back. I don't I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um plus, I don't know. His back's healthy enough that the Yankees weren't scared of giving him one for nineteen. So maybe a team gets talked into giving him three years and the Yankees won't go there and who knows where it ends up. If Rizzo it feels like Judge and Rizzo are kind of attached, which is kind of weird because they shouldn't be. But, yeah, if if that doesn't happen, the Yankees are a whole new team. Yeah, if Judge and Rizzo are gone, whole new team. Left field, Harrison Bader feels new. Left side of the infield. Feels like a veteran. He feels like a veteran? Climbs up to a lot of people's number one Yankee. Yeah. 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 That'd be a dangerous bet to make at the DraftKings Sportsbook. And by the way, NBA fans, hello. National Boring Association. This is an MLB show. Come on now. 
<laughs> NBA fans, the NBA action is just getting started, and so are the incredible offers at the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 bet pregame money line. You have to bet it before the game. Uh, money line bet, and you'll get $200 in free bets if your team wins. So, hey, find a really good team playing a really bad team. Bet that. Great chance to win $200 in free bets. They have their same game, parlays, parsleys. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 in free bets if your team wins only the DraftKings Sportsbook. Promo code JOHNBOY. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions. Last these show notes for details. Is that Russian guys to own the Nets? No. How long did he own them for? Not very long. I'd say like four or five years, maybe. And then he sold them? Yeah. Did he make money? Probably. He didn't care. They didn't win. Prokhorov. Would they be better if he was still around? Now Joe Sy is the owner. I don't think so. I think Joe Sy is a really well-respected owner. People really like him. Yeah, but they're like an embarrassment. Not yes and of no. Him. Not because of him. Everyone's like, yeah, it's in spite of him. Oh. Like he's really good. Okay. Uh. You want to talk about Tyone? It's still qualifying off <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm on Prokhorov's Wikipedia page. Prokhorov has never been married, but has been engaged twice. Shortly after purchasing the Nets, he vowed to get married if the Nets had not won an NBA championship within five years. In July 2015, he rescinded the pledge. That's that's motivation right there. Interesting. If you guys win, I'll marry this broad. <laughs> yeah. Team's yeah. Like, okay. I'll do it. You think I won't? Who is it? It's Nash's sister. He wasn't <laughs> around. <laughs> that was NBA talk. Jim Jameson Tyone. Yeah, another qualifying offer. By the time this comes out, maybe we have news on it. Went to New Orleans with Monty. And I think we joked about them being... Yeah, they're friends. Buddies that were nervous to be buddies. Yeah. Monty telling them all about how much better it was not on the Yankees. Yeah, they probably like... When Hartness makes the heart grow fonder, when Monty got traded away, I think they were both like, damn, that's my guy. So he probably goes to Cardinals now. I would give Monty the qualifying offer. I think if he accepts it, then okay. We need another starter. Maybe that's not where you want to spend the money. But I don't think that, that's say Monte and Tyone. I don't think Tyone is going to accept it. I think he wants his first time as a free agent. Right. I think he's going to want um, years. Years. Um, yeah. And even if it's less AAV, I think he's going to want, you know, four years locked up. This guy's gotten a lot of, been through some stuff. He's yeah. seen down years, injured years. I'm sure he wants to secure as much money as possible. If someone's going to give him a four-year deal, even if it's a lower AAV than the 19.5, I think he's going to opt out and go grab that. So if you're the Yankees, you offer it. It's an interesting conversation because Jameson Tyone, he came off the double Tommy John, um, which, I mean, that's that in and of itself is crazy, never mind his cancer stuff and all of that. Um, the qualifying offer is about 19.5 mil. And that is more than he'd make AAV uh, per year. But if he goes, uh, if the Yankees offer it, if he hits free agency, he's probably looking at a three-year deal or something in that guess. Fangraphs estimates him getting three for 39. That'd be about 13 mil a year. So you lock up those three years, you're kind of, it's, it's set, and that's what happens. If the Yankees do give him the qualifying offer, A, we talked about the draft picks and how that can affect a potential free agency. Not sure how much. I, I think if you're willing to offer a starting pitcher three years, I think that that pick is kind of whatever at that point. I don't know. The only way that Tyone could balk at it is if he's feeling better. The guy came off Tom, double Tommy John and is getting built up. Um you know, his ERA, his first year with the Yankees was a 4-3. It went down to a 3-9-1 last year. Uh, 100 ERA plus both years. That's kind of funny. If he thinks he has more in the tank, if he thinks he's getting stronger, he could take that 19 and a half, which is more than he would make next year taking a longer contract. And if he thinks he could hit free agency as the same or better, that could be a bet he wants to make. 
Um, so that's interesting from the Yankee perspective because we don't really know where they stand with J-Mo. Um, it, you know, he's he's obviously with Cole, Nestor, and Seve. Um, he's not in their top three. Uh, they want Montas to be better than him. We won't even go down that conversation right now because Montas is is one of the names that can really get Yankee fans hot right now still uh, if, you, if you're messing around on the internet streets. I don't go there. That I don't know. I, I'm in... I genuinely don't know if the Yankees will send the qualifying offer because it it creates a game of chicken both ways that it could end up being one of those Yankees veteran things where they're just like, hey, we really we really appreciate what you did for us. We're not going to attach the qualifying offer. Enjoy your free agency. I don't know. I I really don't have a lean on this one. I would lean. He's not coming back. To the Yankees. Qualifying offer-wise. I think they should have offered. I don't think he'd accept it. Okay. See, I don't I don't have that lean. I, I think if he if he gets that dangled in chance. front of him, I think he likes New York. 19 and a half is more than he'd get. I don't know. I think he wants... I would lean he, he doesn't, but there's a more than good chance he would. If he doesn't get the qualifying offer, he's going to earn more money. Right. So I would think he does that. But the qualifying offer like would be more than anyone's going to give him on a per year basis. So one year of that, yeah, he want to get year. as much per one year. I mean, if you're Jamison Tyone, you yeah, but we you just saw Chad Green get, get hurt, and is like how many guys have gotten hurt in their contract year to to go into a contract year off a full season with pretty decent results and two years now. Like man, if I was his agent, I would say absolutely fucking do not accept that qualifying offer. Go get yourself fifty million. I mean, he just saw Aaron Judge go and have one of the best years yeah, ever. Yeah, but this is a guy that's missed a lot of his time. Sure, He's had career altering. Like injuries. if he misses time next year, man, you're 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 looking at that being your biggest earning. But he still has twenty million it's coming in, you know. And and say say you're he good. hits free agency and he's only really getting offered. What if it's like three years, ten per year? I mean, now you're taking a chance on those two seasons, basically in one year. I think he'd get. 10. I mean, Zach Eflin just turned down 15. Right, because he wants years as well. Would. Yeah. And that's, it's, I mean, it's part of free agency. Like, we looked I mean, at the what starting. what did Paxton get to go to the Red Sox? I think it was, he uh, was injured. One and for did. seven, one for eight. Thought he or it was two, year two but one What year. was two for 20? I don't think so. Uh, he, Someone, he just, some Tommy John guy just got They two just for declined 20. a $6 million option on him. Might be well, that's because he did get 10. healthy. But some Tommy John guy got two for 20. Knowing he wasn't going to pitch the first year. So, like, if. Yeah, I'm looking at Paxson's right now. Fairly. Might not have 10 million him. guaranteed to him with the buyout, I think, but. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, Fangraphs has him projected three for 13. Um, 13 so, per? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, if he thinks he can put another. Solid year in the tank, you get that 20 mil, and then you can also do it. I, I don't think what you're saying is wrong either. It'd be nice to have the next three years of your life locked up, but I, I think he could, I could see him going either way, and I wouldn't be shocked if they offer it. And I think with that, I think the Yankees have planned to move on from Tyone that I don't think they're going to offer him the qualifying offer. Which pitchers have accepted the qualifying offer in the last couple of years? Let's see. Uh, did Rodon? Um, let's see. Not Syndergaard. I think Brandon Belt was the only... I don't know if that was last year. Yeah, last year, 14 players got offered it, and 13 didn't accept it. Let's see. Kevin that was the only one that took it last year. Two years ago, Gossman and Stroman. Going into uncertainty of CBA and lockout stuff. Because usually it's like the union doesn't want you to take the qualifying offer. It was no, it was designed to not be accepted. Yeah. Like only it's been accepted like the eleven times ever, and like all of them are in the last three, four years. Yeah, where well, there's CBA and COVID and uncertainty. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, to a it's rare point. to accept it. 
Jayco to Rizzi. And I, I think for all three of those guys, it kind of worked out. Maybe, I don't know. Like the the pitchers that accept that turned down qualifying offers going back to twenty twenty, Strasburg, Mad Bum, Cole and Wheeler, all of them got at least five years and eighty five million. Mm-hmm. If you go to twenty twenty one, um Bauer was the only one that turned it down and he got his kooky contract. Um and then last year Syndergaard got more money. Syndergaard, he went for the one for twenty one, which was bizarre in his own thing because he money, was rehabbing um, S- from the Angels. Robbie Ray got more money. He got five for one fifteen. Erod, Erod got, got more money in years. Five for seventy seven, and Verlander got two for fifty. So, yeah, I just uh, those numbers are bigger than, like, if you had to put Tyone in a bucket with compared to the accept it guys or the not accept it guys, he's kind of closer to the accept it guys, right? I know it's not a perfect way to view it. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of that was just COVID and scary times accepting. Because he's been pretty good. Didn't miss a start last year. Didn't miss a start the year before that. Statistically, he's been exactly league average as a Yankee. I think you there's a world where he says, oh, I'll take that. I'll do. I'll have a better year than that statistically. But obviously, the health is was huge the last two years. It's also a chance the Yankees don't even offer it. So. That's, just, I'm, there's a chance for anything. Here. I'm 50-50 on the offer. I, I, would, I guess if I had to pick, I don't think the Yankees even offer it. What is that? Do you think that means anything? Do you think that means they're eyeing other pitching? I think they is have the other whole, plans. The spin I think seeking? they have other plans than one year, nineteen million for Jamison Tyone. Remember? I mean, they were in the Verlander sweepstakes last year. They have four that they like. Like they currently don't think of Frankie Montas the way Yankee fans think of Frankie Montas. I think they would add another starter. Um, and if it's someone better than Frankie Montas, I know people don't no, want. But they always say you need six starters. They have they they have four. And Clark and Herman are still lurking. Um, no, the Clark's a bullpen guy now, and Herman needs to be off the team because think, they don't use him. I think both of them are going to be at spring training as starters, um, as they're six and seven. Uh, Herman, I don't know. The last two years, they really like just put him in timeout back of the year both times in, at important parts. They treat Domingo Herman as two different people. The first five months of the regular season, they're excited for him, <laughs> and then the last. Yeah, month and I a think half they just got to get re- get over that. They just got to start <laughs> fresh. But I don't know if they're going to go after any pitchers. They need to. I think they will. Uh, uh, the That's the shallowest like entering entering spring field ever that we've had in the last like four years, five years. The starting pitching pool is pretty solid this year because pitching was good this year. Yeah. Um. I I think they plan on adding a fifth and. Looking at their rotation with Cole, Nestor, Sevy, Montas, and Blank, and saying, you know, we have our best starting five since. You know, they like the guys that they like. What are the odds they they go get Andrew Heaney now that he's uh, uh, had, a, had a nice he year with the Dodgers? Like that. That'd be a stubborn move. The Heen dog? IKF, Donaldson, Heaney. I don't know Andrew Heaney's agent, but I think there might be one team on his no list. Maybe he wants a redemption story. Maybe Andrew Heaney wants to shave his downstairs mix-up. He does. Was Manscaped. The braid. What was that? He does, besides the braid. This holiday season, I'll be giving <laughs> thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and using code YANKS. For free shipping and 20% off. You think your holiday spread is good? You should see poppies after I take care of it with the 4.0 performance package. That lawnmower 4.0, you got it. Weed whacker for ear and nose hair. You got it. Crop preserver, crop reviver, performance boxer briefs. I know all three of us have worn those. You got it. No hygiene routine is complete without Manscaped Signature Deodorant as well, and it makes for the perfect gift. It's coming that time of year, so get 20% off and free shipping with code YANKS 
at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code YANKS. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Your balls will thank you. Sevy's back. We didn't mention that. We like that. Yeah. They said that in the, the exit interview and they executed it, which makes sense. When Zach Eflin is turning down one year $15 million and you have a team option to bring back Sevy for one year fifteen, that's how that works. I wonder if they're worried about innings or they're going to let him actually pitch. I mean, it's the last year of his contract, and I mean, nothing's promised. Like, you know, for the past two years, we wondered if they'd, they'd limit Tyone at all, and they didn't. <laughs> uh, Tyone went from a buck 44 to 177. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I know Yankee fans, we, we love Seve when he takes out that bulldog. It, it hits a chord in us. But I, I think the Yankees are are probably about to treat this like this is Seve's last year. Huh, that's sad. I like Seve. We like Seve. By maybe by doing that, they bring back, you know, an old friend for him. You've got a theory brewing. Well, I don't know if we're there yet. Cause I do have my sheet now where I have my um my roster okay. for next year. Do you have yours? Your full twenty six man roster for next year? Um Pretty close, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's 26, man. The bullpen gets tricky. Right. Um, I mean, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Is that usually how many there are? Is In the it, pen? A pitcher's total. Is it 14? 14 and 12? Nine. Um, yeah. 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 So I got to sign a reliever. Okay. I did it. You have your full roster. You're about to release your full roster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, dog. I don't love it, but I but it's it's there. Um All right. it's optimistic. All right. Um Trevino's catching. Sure. Rizzo's at first. Okay. Glaber's at Second. Peraza's at short. Okay. You have Glaber back. Okay. Don Donaldson, it's like DJ's at third. Right. To start the season. Judges in right. Okay. Bader's in center. Yoshida's in left. Mm. Cabrera's you too. Right. Starting pitching staff, six man rotation. Six man. Six man. Cole, Nestor, Severino, Sanga, Tanaka, mm. Montas. Right. Bullpen, Holmes, Loizaga, King, Peralta, Trevino, Marinaccio, Litke, Canely. Canely's back. Canely's back. And you signed, what are their names again from Japan? Yoshida, Senga, and Tanaka. It's a three package. three headed monster. Same flight. Be a good back page. I'd buy that. I would if they sign all three of those. It's front page. Probably the front page. If thing. they sign all three of those guys, I will buy my second newspaper ever. Okay. Well, as long as they're all on the same picture. Right. Flying together. That should be signed same day. I think when if they didn't link up the when the third one signs, I still think we'd get a really good newspaper. Yeah. Tanaka flying them over. Matsui's involved. Oh, yeah. He's flying the plane. We like that. So there you go. That's my November 8th. That's what you got. Yeah. Okay. What do you have? Nothing. Did you do the bench? Cabrera. He's mentioned you till. We didn't get the. There should be three other bench players, I believe. Carpenter. Carpenter's back. Mm -hmm. Wow. He loved his time. Big. It's a bad move, though. Oof. Oh. Well, it's, you know, oof. It's kind of a playoff bench spot. But he'll rotate in. He'll get in. And, um, I guess 
Hicks? Wait, I need four people on the bench. You have a backup catcher? Rort Vet. Rort Vet. He's a silhouette. Um, Hicks, I guess. Yeah. The quotes have been that Hicks finds a way. But I'd rather Ben Intendi than Yoshida. Yeah, the uh, this is just a Jake theory. Don't take it to the bank. A Jiri. Uh, a Jakiri. I think Benny's going to have a really nice free agency. Um, you know, that, that Fine dining. ham ate bone. Sucks that it ended there for him and us as Yankee fans. Uh, but he had a really nice year. He's hitting free agency younger than most dudes hit free agency. The corner outfielders are pretty thin. Uh, and he still plays good defense in that contact version of baseball. I think we, you know, we saw in this playoffs and the past couple playoffs that that, that matters. It just does. I know A-Rod takes it to the extreme, and he's talking about bunting when he's one of the most prolific home run hitters all time. But what Benny does plays comes playoff time. He had a really nice all-star year this year. He hit over 300. He plays good defense. Um, and there's not a lot of competition in left field that, He's going to get a nice offer. I think the Yankees are going to be in it. I have no idea if they plan on winning because if they do, basically every Yankee fan has Judge coming back. Pretty much every Yankee fan has Rizzo coming back, which means if you have Rizzo, Judge, and Benny coming back, you're running back a pretty similar version of the Yanks, uh, which is a little daunting when the team shut down come playoff time. With injuries, but still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but by getting the three the three headed monster from Japan, what you're doing right. is prepping for Otani's free agency. And then Sapporo basically sponsors the whole thing. And now you are Team Japan. Which Randy Levine loves. That's a lot of money. Might make a stadium in Japan, open up open up the year. Start the season over Start there. Start the season. Do one of those. Yeah. It's actually an A's home game. That'd be fun. We'd stream it. A little 5 a.m. stream a roo in the lounge. Oh, we would yeah. stream it. Yeah. You'd fall asleep. Eating eggs with Joe's. You know I'm good early. Not after the night we have. And if you like good nights, that means you like good days. Make sure you guys are checking out baseball today. They'll be covering some Yanks. That judge free agency is a big thing, but they also cover everything around baseball. Our friend Trevor Plouffe, Chris Rose, maybe you're familiar with him, gave the Yankees the 9 trophy. You remember that? like to think about that a lot. On AMP, they do the show live. Uh, you can interact with them. They take callers. Download the AMP app and use code BASEBALL today. Baseball today. Baseball today. That's the name of the show. That's the name of the show. That's the name of the show. Oh, that's the name of the show. Uh, so download the AMP app. Go check out our guys, Chris and Trev. They're great dudes. And they'll uh, they'll bring you along this baseball offseason too. Love you. Jimmy gave his 26 man this app. I will give mine next time. I'm going to tear it apart. It's awful. Copy and paste. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. Oh, <laughs> oh,